if you're able to drive five hours to see uh, Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter IMAX, I applaud you. I think that's awesome, your willingness to do that. But if you're unable or unwilling to do so, I don't think that means you're a terrible person and that you're not a real Christopher Nolan fan or something. I think sometimes fandom creates these expectations with the internet, especially that are, that are not healthy. Um, if you can see it in 70 millimeter IMAX, I think you should. But if you can't or are unwilling to for some reason, I don't think that's going to be the end of the world. Keep in mind that 90% of humanity is not going to see this movie in that format. They're probably going to see it in some digital format. And for that reason, the people who make these movies tend to do a very good job of converting whatever film version there is into digital. I think for Oppenheimer, they're working off of a uh, uh, 8K master or something for the, for the digital versions. So it should look pretty good. Um, and part of the reason why I'm somewhat confident about that uh, is because, like a crazy person, I saw Dunkirk in theater four times. Okay, the first time I saw it was at the Bullock Museum in, uh, um, in Austin, Texas, which is an IMAX. Now, I had seen Interstellar there in the 70 millimeter IMAX format when Interstellar came out. Okay, and that was an amazing experience. So when I heard Dunkirk was coming out, I was like really excited to go see it in 70 millimeter IMAX there. But then it turned out that for whatever reason, the theater had disposed of the 70 millimeter IMAX projector and had, pro and had replaced it with one of these new uh, GT2 dual laser IMAX projectors that some of the IMAXs have, not all of them, but but a few do. Um, and, you know, so I was disappointed when I had heard the news, but it still seemed like my best option for seeing Dunkirk. So I went and saw it there. And boy, was I surprised. It looked awesome. Even though it was not 70 millimeter IMAX film with this new dual laser projector um, by IMAX, it still looked amazing. And it was still in that 1.43 to 1 aspect ratio that you get with a real IMAX that you typically get at a science museum or a museum of uh, some sort. Um, I believe the Air and Space Museum has a similar projector, so does the California uh, Science Center. Um, and it looks really good and amazing despite the fact that it's not technically 70 millimeter film. Um, anymore. But all right, I wanted to do some more comparisons. I was still interested in the formats. So then I saw Dunkirk a second time, but this time at a normal 70 millimeter theater, an Alamo Draft House, um, which is a nice theater chain that focuses in Texas. Uh, and it looked really good, um, as you would expect from 70 millimeter film and from a beautifully shot film like Dunkirk. However, I did miss a bit of the taller of the of the, of the screen that you get with a with uh, with the IMAX, including that GT two laser projector um, IMAX. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed about that. So then I decided, okay, now I want to see it in its ultimate format. Uh, I want to see it in seventy millimeter IMAX. So I drove four hours to the nearest. Uh, 70 millimeter IMAX, uh, which was in Dallas, Texas, the Cinemark uh, something in Dallas. And it was a good experience. But to be honest, I was disappointed because I did not think it was worth the four hour drive. Um, the GT2 laser projector that they have in some of these IMAXs is, is so good and that they had at the Bullock Museum. I... I did not notice as that significant a difference in image quality. Um, and in fact, there was some projector shaking um, at the 70 millimeter IMAX in, in, in Dallas, the Cinemark there. Um, and I don't blame that on the format. Um, I blame it on the theater because 
the 70 millimeter version I saw at the uh, uh, Alamo Draft House, the normal 70 millimeter, it didn't have protector shaking. And when I saw in your cellar in 70 millimeter IMAX at the Bullock Museum, it didn't have projector shaking. So I think it was something with the Cinemark Theater that day. And that does raise an interesting caveat when you're seeing these movies in film, which is there's a lot more variables that can kind of go wrong. It depends more on who is manning the booth that day and in what state that copy, uh, that copy is, is in. Um, so that's something uh, to keep in mind there. But having said that, if I lived in Dallas, I would still definitely go see uh, see it there um, at that at that seventy millimeter IMAX place. Um, so after that, I wanted to see it one time in a normal digital theater just to see what most of the country was seeing, how they were seeing this movie. I was curious to compare. Um, so I went to a nice digital theater, but the kind of theater that 99% of you live within a 15 minute drive of or, or, or there's about, you know, the nice theater in town that you go to see Mission Impossible or John Wick at without a second thought and without having to, without thinking of, going on a four-hour spiritual journey to a theater or something. Um, and even at that normal digital theater, I thought Dunkirk looked fantastic. And that shouldn't be surprising because it's a fantastically shot movie. And a fantastically shot movie like that is going to look good regardless of, of, of the format um, if it's released in a decent, in a decent theater. Um, and the thing to consider is that things that are shot on film still look like they're shot on film, even if projected digitally. Uh, that's why Lawrence of Arabia still looks awesome on your OLED and why Jordan Peele bothers to shoot on 70 millimeter IMAX film, even though he knows that no one is ever going to see it in that format, uh, because he's only going to get a digital distribution, um, until I guess he becomes as big a deal as Chris Nolan and can convince the studios to let him release it in film like that. Uh, but he still does it, presumably because the advantages or the look of film still come through even when projected uh, digitally. And as an anecdote, I, I used to own a 720p uh, projector. Um, now, as, as you know, if you know anything about AV, 720p is a pretty low resolution. And I set it up about 10 feet away from me and it had this big 100 inch image. And did it look pixelated? Be honest, no. It, it still looked really freaking amazing. I mean, you could sort of see the pixels if you really, if you really looked at it, but things still looked amazing. I remember projecting uh, Jurassic Park on it and you could still see film grain. It still looked like film and it was still a really awesome experience. The best experience I had watching Jurassic Park in a home theater, despite it being a lowly 720p projector. Because there's something to be said about having a great big image and seeing something on a great big image. And fortunately, you're going to see a great big image at almost any theater you go to, especially compared to your to the TV that you're used to watching movies on. Or nowadays, people even watch movies on their phones and stuff too. Um, so any theater is going to look amazing um, compared to a phone, of course, but even just compared to a, a nice home cinema, uh, unless you have a very nice, great big projector. Um, I also, on that 720p projector, I watched Lawrence of Arabia. I brought the Blu-ray for that, and I put it on that, and it still looked amazing, even at 720p resolution. It still looked really good. And I've seen Lawrence of Arabia in 70 millimeter film. Um, I once went to the AFI Theater in Washington, D.C., and that looks amazing in 70 millimeter film, but it also still looked pretty damn amazing um, in my home on, on, on my projector, you know, on a 100-inch screen sitting 10 feet away. 
um, or something, because there's something to be said for for the big screen. And you know the the uh, the typical nice digital cinema today uh, would probably be the envy of our of our ancestors. Um, unfortunately, with COVID, a lot of nice cinemas did shut down, but there are still enough of them around that you probably have one within a a 15 minute drive of you um, or something that you'll be happy seeing Oppenheimer on or or pretty much any movie. So my point is, is that yes, if you can see something like Oppenheimer on 70 millimeter IMAX, of course you should. But if you can't, it's probably not going to be the end of the world. Now, as I'm making this video, it's uh, it's very, very early Thursday morning, uh, July 20th, um, which is why it's still dark out. Uh, yes, I'm up, I'm, I'm, I'm up quite late. Um, and I am seeing Oppenheimer in a few hours. It, it, it comes out the, it comes out technically tomorrow on Friday, but there are still some showings mm -hmm. Thursday night and I'm going to a Thursday night showing, at an IMAX and a pretty bad IMAX. It's a, it's a 2K Xenon projector IMAX. But I still think, despite that, I'm probably going to have a good time. Um, unfortunately, that's the best theater I have in my area. But as the as the trailer for Oppenheimer says uh, on if you at, at Mission Impossible, if you go see Mission Impossible, they play a trailer for Oppenheimer in front of it that says, um, see it in the biggest screen you can. You know, the trailer doesn't say, see it in only in IMAX 70 millimeter. It says, see it on the biggest screen you can. And for some people that will be IMAX 70 millimeter, but for most of us, it's not going to be. And I think it's going to be okay. And it's going to be good. And if I like the movie I will probably drive an hour and a half or something to a smaller theater that has a 70 millimeter projector and see it and, and see it there and, and compare. But and my point is, is I don't think you need to drive yourself crazy over this. Um, and that a lot of the gatekeeping is likely going to be unnecessary and, if you can see it in 70 millimeter IMAX, that's great. But if, if, and I think you should, but if you can't, it's not the end of the world. Um, and uh, it's just great to see people going back to the movies uh, finally after COVID. Anyway, thanks.